Thank you for coming back from the bar. Um, <laughs> and thank you for inviting me here today. I'm delighted to be speaking in the coveted Friday afternoon at 4.30 slot. Um, and I do realise that uh, the only thing keeping you from further drinks or a train home and further drinks uh, is me. Uh, and after two days, those drinks might be uh, taking an increasingly important place in your mind. But don't worry, uh, I tend to find that the second hour of my speeches um, <laughs> always passes so much more quickly um, than the first hour does. Um, the, the theme of the conference is radical futures. I'm speaking on the cusp of a spending review, which places constraints on what I can usefully talk about. There's no point in idle speculation. We'll soon know the facts. But whatever the outcome of the spending review, change is underway in the arts and cultural sector, and that includes museums. Even if money were not an issue, change would be forced upon us. Because the ways in which we live and interact, the nature of the social fabric, and our ambitions as a nation are changing. It's a fact that much of the most innovative thinking about change has come from the museum's sector. You were proposing new ways of working years ago. And you know that money by itself cannot buy relevance nor secure longevity. It's the strategy that counts, the way that money is invested by an organization, not to prop up the status quo, but to effect changes that will future-proof it. The UK has arguably the best regional museums and galleries in the world. Some 2,000 accredited museums telling the story of everything from the Roman Empire to the development of the pencil. Since I've been Chief Executive of the Arts Council, I've been intent on getting to know the cultural ecology that we invest in. I've visited some 50 museums since I started in the job six months ago, from Cumbria to Cornwall, and I've been excited by what I've seen. It quickly occurred to me that the spine of this sector are our civic museums, the ones that celebrate the histories of our villages, towns, and cities, and explore their connections to the world. Many were built in the 19th century. They reflect local civic pride, and especially in the Midlands and the North, huge industrial wealth. Look at Sheffield, Newcastle, Manchester, Liverpool, Preston, Sunderland, Leeds, Blackburn, and so on. Spectacular civic buildings and huge, astonishingly diverse collections. It means you can find rare Pacific Island feathered capes in Newcastle, and internationally important medieval manuscripts in Blackburn. And for nearly 200 years, these civic museums and collections have operated largely on a model of free provision established by the Victorians. Now, the economic environment is changing. That model is being questioned, and those civic museums are today feeling threatened. They're squeezed between radical local authority, uh, reduced, radically reduced levels of local authority support and an increasingly competitive environment for national funding, whether from the Arts Council or the Heritage Lottery Fund. Local authority funding for museums declined from £310 million a year in 2010 to £240 million a year in 2014. And that's at a time when the Arts Council's grant and aid from government has been reduced by around a third, with a consequent impact on the whole arts and culture sector. The funding predicament of local authority museums is the subject of an independent report that we've just published. This shows how hard these mu museums are working to effect change, becoming more enterprising all the time and generating more income year by year, including from philanthropy. And when John, our director of museums, visits museums across England, he knows the conversation will be as likely be about hire for weddings and the net profit of a retail service as about world-class collections. But rest assured, the Arts Council remains absolutely committed to investing in organizations with excellent collections and the highest quality curation. As well as they're doing, civic museums cannot increase revenue at the rates that public investment is declining. This is an issue all over the country, but it's a particular issue in the Midlands and the North. Here are the largest civic collections housed in the largest civic buildings, the most expensive to maintain. Here are some of the local authorities that have been hardest hit by reductions in funding. Civic museums that run some of the strongest programs for local people, but have the least potential 
to develop overtly commercial models. The last survey in 2013 showed that some 90% of philanthropic contributions to museums and collections went to London. That's a reflection of the richness and importance of the national collections. But it shows how hard it is for those civic museums to make a fast transition. They need time. Rest assured, at the Arts Council, we will continue to advocate strongly for the positive role public investment plays. At the same time, we must all make resources work harder and be more focused on our relationship with our partners and our audiences. A key finding in the report is the need for museums to have shared strategic goals with local authorities. The research shows that the museums doing best are those that have proactive leaders who support a culture of enterprise. But crucially, they're also the museums where their local authority partner is traveling hand in hand with them on their journey of change. Meanwhile, among local authorities, there's a contrast between those who see their museums as assets and approach this challenging time in a proactive, strategic way, and those that take decisions the more short term and outside that spirit of partnership. Civic museums can and must align their purpose with that of their local authority and put enterprise at the heart of the way they work. In turn, local authorities should support enterprise and think long-term about the asset their museums represent, because museums are crucial local assets. Their loss would leave an echoing void at the heart of local culture. But their development can unlock cultural and economic benefits. There are many local authorities that get arts and culture. Colchester and Ipswich, for example, where we're seeing the things I've talked about put in action. Here, two local authorities have combined their museum services, creating a strong service that works with a range of partners, including the higher education sector. And it gets best value out of resources, sharing them more with the community so that buildings play host to arts productions and as well as after school clubs. The workforce is learning new skills, looking at ways in which keeping and learning can be combined so that those who are the most knowledgeable about collections can be the best at communicating about them. And this, in turn, helps drive the tourism, heritage and visitor economy in which museums now play such an important part in Essex and Suffolk. And what about the Arts Council? What have we been doing in the last couple of years? And what can we do to help those museums more? First, we now have a larger and wider range of major partner museums including the Black Country Living Museum and Coventry Consortium and the Cornwall Consortium. We've recognised that leaders among museums don't necessarily have to be the largest or longest established museums. The Black Country Living Museum is investing a third of its major partner museum funding into a sector leadership programme. Cornwall is focusing on building resilience, not only for the six museums that make up the consortium, but on the whole Cornish museum sector. We've invested in the Museum's Resilience Fund and Museum Development. This has included more than £2 million into workforce development. We've, focused, we've increased our focus on partnership, working hand-in-hand -hand with the Heritage Lottery Fund and bodies such as the Museum Association, the Association of Independent Museums and the National Museums Directors Conference. We've focused our Open Fund on resilience, supporting 109 projects. We've given more help to networks, especially subject specialist networks, but also others, such as the Museums and Health Network. And recently, a network for leaders of museums such as Birmingham and Derby that have moved from local authority control to trust status. We've simplified the processes for accreditation, underpinning the development of the sector. We've worked with our major partner museums to look at diversity in the workforce. And we've supported more collaboration between artists and arts organisations and museums. We want to do more. We want to make the most of being the development agency for the whole cultural sector, encouraging museums and arts and cultural organisations to work together. We want to play an effective role developing museums, whatever the level of government funding. And that includes thinking whether the funding structures we have are fit for purpose how we can open up more funding opportunities, help museums develop revenue streams and incentivise donations. It's a great irony that civic museums, so often founded through acts of individual generosity, now struggle to attract gifts. How can we change that?
How can we attract new donors to support local culture? Could, for example, our great national institutions based in London use their brands to attract donors for their civic partners? It's not an easy environment, but I am passionate about museums, and I have faith in them. They are our national, historic, and intellectual resource, and I feel that now there is a great opportunity for them. The idea of placemaking is becoming ever more important. That's reflected in government policy on devolution powers. It's shown in the concept of the Northern Powerhouse, and we can expect it to be reflected in the government's new white paper on culture. Placemaking is a term with a mixed history. It belonged once to a protest movement campaigning against urban redevelopment. Today, it's applied simply in the context of economic regeneration. It is, in a sense, a phrase that is waiting to be filled out. Museums can make that phrase mean something rich and sustaining. In an increasingly global market, there's an inevitable uniformity of products, and that extends to culture. As globalization gathers pace, the quality of uniqueness becomes ever more valuable, both personally and economically. In this context, our histories, the narratives of where we come from and what has shaped us, become powerful resources to help communities to work together to rediscover their unique spirit of place. And our museums and collections are treasure houses of stories. Stories which attract audiences and visitors, and which are also sources of practical and inspirational insight into how problems have been met and solved. A couple of weeks ago, we had Back to the Future Day. In a museum, every day can be Back to the Future Day. Every day offers an inspirational dialogue with history. How can we create confident communities that are good places to live, to raise families, and to build businesses, unless they also have a sense of their history, of purpose, and of the future, a true sense of place? We cannot do that without investing in the museums, in the arts and culture around which our communities are formed. Our chair, Sir Peter Bazalgette, has often talked about the need for grand partnerships and for our museums to thrive at the heart of our communities. We will need a grand partnership of museum funders and other organisations. As you heard from their chair, Sir Peter Luff, last night, the Heritage Lottery Fund fully intends to continue to take a leading role in this as the largest public funder of regional museums after local authorities. The Arts Council will continue to work hand in hand with HLF and also with national membership bodies like the Museums Association and the Association of Independent Museums, with national museums and galleries, and with local stakeholders, including local authorities and higher education institutions. Together, we can provide the best possible support for regional museums. These challenging times will require us to be joined up in our advocacy and our actions and to be prepared to take strong and brave decisions about the nature and focus of our support. Culture matters and museums matter. They enrich our lives and shape our future. That's what the Arts Council believes and that's what I believe. With the spending review now only weeks away, I hope it's a message that we'll all take from here tonight and share with passion. Thank you for listening.